All right. Hello, Contractor Pros, and welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast, episode number 30. Today, we're going to interview the two owners of EverPro at tryeverpro.com. They run a virtual office company for home service companies and excel at customer service and using machine learning to take it into the 21st century. So without further ado, let's introduce Rolando Serrano, CEO, and Steve Borbach, COO of EverPro. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast for Contractors. Get actionable advice and tactics on how to grow your home service company, plus interviews with industry experts dropping value bombs in marketing, sales, and operations. And now, let's power up your home service biz with your host, Mark Ambrose of Battle Plan Marketing. All right, welcome to the show, Rolando and Steve. We appreciate you guys joining us today and sharing your insights and expertise with the audience out there. So thanks for taking the time and joining us today. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Mark. Yeah, we appreciate it. So uh, you guys can talk as you seem fit, jump back and forth, but tell us what you guys are doing now, who your customer is, and what it is you do to help them out. Yeah, so our company is called EverPro, and what we do is basically serve the home services contractors in the United States, and we basically help them just manage the day-to-day operations of managing a business. Specifically, what we do is, the shorthand is we're an answering service for these businesses. What we do is basically take calls, talk to the customer, understand their issue, get all of their information, and then look at their schedule, look at the calendar, and just see where that customer fits in, and go ahead and schedule them and dispatch them out for the technicians and the business owners to go out and do the work and not have to necessarily be interrupted throughout the day or have to take these calls while they're in the middle of doing something else under a sink or working with another customer or picking up a part to go satisfy another customer, client, things like that. So we basically just take a lot of the interruptions and customer service interactions out of the day-to-day by handling those calls, talking to the customer, getting all the info, and then getting them on the calendar and moving on to the next one. So customer service, dispatch, and even lead generation or lead assignment Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely an element of not necessarily lead generation, but lead management, meaning if there's a request that comes in via email or online form or anything like that, or obviously phone call, basically our reps, our girls will take the call or make the call and go ahead and engage that customer and basically go through the same workflow in terms of understanding what the need is and then fitting them into the calendar as the business owner has uh, specified. Nice. I like that. Sorry to just to tack onto that there, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good high level overview. And I think one of the areas where Rolando and I really kind of stand out with EverPro is that today's world is all driven about data. Big data drives decision making, right? And so I think one of our competitive advantages is we understand that and we try to gather these data points for our pros, provide them more business insights as far as their phone calls, conversion on leads and things like that so that they can make better decisions and we can help them make better decisions as a strategic partner for them. But also the world is just changing so fast. Technology is growing and adapting and changing at such a rapid pace. It's important to have a partner that can really understand that and work with some of these guys and gals in the service industry that maybe aren't up to speed with all the latest trends in tech, right? So kind of blending those two worlds together, but still keeping that human touch on it, right? It's really important to have face-to-face conversations. I think we've seen that now more than ever with COVID and everybody kind of being stuck at home, right? Everybody still likes to talk to people and have that human interaction, but you definitely got to bring it up with data points and tech to really drive business decisions forward. Yes. So is your ideal home services contractor is your industry? Is there a dollar figure or like a number of trucks that they're rolling? Are you looking for the smaller to mid-sized guy or who doesn't yet have a full office, full staff? Or are you looking for any size because your systems are superior and you can process quickly and save these guys money on any level? Yeah, we cover all of them. Basically, the way we think about it is less about which specific segment do we really want to go after. We're a smaller business, so we're not looking to be the McDonald's of answering service. And so with that in mind, basically, we're just looking to work with people that have a shared vision of the future, that basically believe in the same things that we believe in, and that want to do business in the way that kind of see the future doing business. And so it could be owner operators. We have plenty of those guys. And we find that those are some of the most rewarding relationships that we've had, where they just say, God, I've been in business for 14 years. And oh my God, this is just revolutionary. This has just really eased a lot of pain and 
petty, frustrating things on top of getting the job done and working with clients and all of that. So yes, we'll run the gamut. And then we obviously still have multiple truck operations that are running 10 trucks, eight trucks, pretty good sized businesses that are doing a lot of jobs. And so we'll help them out. And you kind of alluded to it with those guys. It's really a cost savings, but it's also just a employee retention strategy in that we basically have a lot of employees that answer the calls for these customers. And so there's never a missed call. There aren't any sick days. You're not down a person ever, right? We have multiple layers of redundancy. And so from that perspective, it is cost efficient, but it's also cost efficient in that we're less than hiring a full-time person, but you don't have a lot of the constraints of hiring somebody where you have to guarantee a certain amount of hours or train them and onboard them and manage them. And hey, we're not busy and oh shit, you still have to pay them because it doesn't matter. Like you got to keep the employee on the payroll, but we're not busy. So you got to look for things that keep them busy with and, and so on. So there's just a lot of challenges challenges with the cycles of the business. And so for us, we just have a lot of very well-qualified representatives. They answer the phone, can basically handle the job 365. That was the thing that impressed me. So we met through a mutual client, right? Bob Bolson, RT Olson Plumbing, that we both serve. And he was impressed by the knowledge of your CSR team out there, that they could speak plumbing to the customers or prospects calling in. So you're looking for really a partner who is open to technology and to working with other teams, right? So who's your ideal? Is that the frame, the mindset of your ideal client? Yeah, it's really who has the shared vision of the future that we have. And so the future really for us looks like mobile phones are real. More and more people are are using them for everything. Yeah, it's a new world. Yeah. There's a lot of people that don't even have home computers, right? Their phone is their computer. Yeah. And a lot of the developing world, that is their computer. And I don't doubt that that's now, you know, penetrating into the West as well. We're going digital. And now we have, due to COVID, nomadic kind of world a little bit. So those people definitely scale down from desktops and such. And quite honestly, you know, that little phone in your hand can land people on the moon, right? So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's very, very, very powerful. Yeah, what that means to us or our clients is really that the world is really changing at a, at a quick rate and the way we used to do business, which uh, the, the way we used to do business is just no longer the way that we need to do business. Right. And some of these companies have been in legacy companies in multiple generations. Right. And we just need to adapt. And so it's really just about knowing that and being willing to do the work to adapt to whatever trends and changes need to be made. So consumer habits and ways of engaging with business owners is just different. But one of the things that I think about often is A1. So there's a lot of A1 companies. And the reason there's A1 is because that would basically put you number one on the yellow pages, right? That's right. Because you're A, and then you come up with a special character in a one. So that is like the first thing that comes up. And so there's a lot of A1 companies out there, which is great. Man, what a hack. That was the Google of the time. And they they have page ranking. That's the kind of innovation that we look for. But in the new digital landscape. And so that's the type of thinking that we apply to our operation every single day. And we've really just gleaned that information from the customers. The customers will tell you everything. They will tell you exactly how they want to do business. And so that's what we do all day, every day is we talk to our reps, run data analytics on the conversations themselves, all of the text that comes from that. We run machine learning against that and try to glean more and more insights on how do we handle these conversations better? How do we get more conversions? What are the homeowners looking for that are customers, our service professionals are not offering? What's that gap? And how do we have that conversation with the business owner to say, hey, there's some opportunity here. How do you want to capture that? How do you want to go after that? Have you thought about it? You have. Okay, great. That's something that we are consciously deciding not to do versus not even knowing that that's a thing that they need to consider. So that's really the shared vision that we're talking about is how do we look at the A1 innovations of yesterday and what are those tomorrow and how do we apply that and have that conversation today to be ready for the future? That's a really good analogy. There, Rolando. Yeah, exactly. Everybody was AAA, A1, because they were trying to get on page one of Google, so to speak, right? That's right. It's good stuff, man. And taking it just a step back, kind of back to uh, your original question there, Mark, every call is a sales opportunity, right? And with sales, you need to build trust. You need to be empathetic. You need to build rapport, build that connection. And so the more that we can bridge that gap between the plumbing professionals that are actually out there doing the work and the homeowner or the tenant or whatever it may be, and really 
show the customer, right? The homeowner, the tenant that we have that knowledge, we have that mastery of this field. It'll make them feel at ease, right? And that's the most important thing is delivering the best service for that particular person so that they keep coming back for more. So the more that we can do that and the better that we can deliver on that promise and that product for our particular customers, the home service professionals, the better. Right. I was impressed right there in that explanation there that it sounds like you guys are using data analytics. You're recording the calls and then using data analytics on the content of the calls to extract opportunities for training, for expansion of products and services. Yeah. What else are you analyzing that data for? That's really interesting to me, actually. Yeah, I think that that's a really exciting tool, which we actually just started with. That's kind of taking it back to the beginning. The world is changing so fast and technology is expanding so rapidly that these tools are available, right? And then it's about how can you best utilize it to suit your business's needs? Because this doesn't just apply to us. This applies to all sorts of industries and, and verticals and companies out there. But yeah, it can translate speech to text. And then we can apply our own custom markers to identify words and phrases. We can apply those to emotions and different contextual points, right? Like this is more of like a sales pitch. This sounds kind of more customer servicey. And then where are our people on the phone applying those strategically to get to better outcomes, right? So we can say, hey, you know, if we're a little bit more salesy and use these words when we're talking about a service fee that translates to capturing more jobs. If we use these words when we're building rapport and create emotion and connection, use these words because they translate to better conversations that are highlighted with more happier customers because they use the words thank you and things like that. Right. I like it. What do you call yourselves? Like a virtual office? What would the term of the type of business you are? Because you're not an answering service. You've taken that to the moon and back, it sounds like. What's your elevator pitch? We just walked in an elevator <laughs> at a trade show. We're going up. I'm a Fortune 500 CEO of the biggest home service company in the world. You want my business. We got 30 seconds. Go. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're on, though. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just not that sexy. The way I would just kind of frame it is we really take the friction out of running your business. Like, that's really it. And so there's just so many facets that go into that, right, that we kind of touched on there. And I think it all comes back to your question there, Mark, as far as like, well, how do you apply some of that, the analytics that we're talking about to the business? And it, I think it's just four things. It really comes down to specifically looking at like the area areas of opportunity that we look at and just kind of going back to just like that text, the conversations that we're actually having and how do we analyze that? It really comes down to like customer service and brand management, right? We really want to deliver a great experience for the customer because that is your brand. And guess what? We're foreign to our business owners right off the bat. And so that's paramount. They've been running these businesses sometimes multi-generations and sometimes for 15 years themselves, right? Or plus 30 years, right? And so for them, it's paramount that we deliver exceptional service and very represent their brand in the best way possible. So I think that's like the first one, right? The second one would be what we've talked about a couple of times, which is conversion. Let's make sure that we're making the most of the opportunities that are coming their way, whether it's an incoming call or an incoming lead through text or online form or whatever. Let's make sure that we're making the absolute most of that opportunity. What is the opportunity? What's the customer looking for? And how do we best satisfy that on every single call? So that's the second thing that we're really looking for in the analytics is which representatives are having which conversations and what terminology are they using and how are they using it and how is that making a difference or not? So we can analyze that. The third area is really employee management. So internal. So for us, really just ensuring that the uh, service level is consistent across the board. Everybody is getting treated in to the standards that we've set forward, which are very, very high standards. So just consistency and making sure that there's no bottlenecks and, and all of that. So it's really like performance management, but just kind of internal operations management. So that would be like the third component. And then the fourth one would really be looking for those opportunities in terms of like product lines and services. Like what are customers looking for that we don't necessarily, the business owner doesn't necessarily already offer. And so that would be kind of like the product categories and just ensuring that we're well positioned in the market to capture all of that opportunity. So it does kind of go back to that conversion piece, but it's more not conversion from existing product lines or product offerings, but from future, from future. Yeah. Just other opportunity in the market. 
I think that's it. Like the elevator pitches. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, that, that's a long elevator pitch, but <laughs> no, that's good. Those are four <laughs> important points. So on point number one, most important, I'm sure, excellent customer service and tying into point number two to convert that caller into a, a service call or a lead. According to our mutual friend there, Bob, it sounds like you guys are training your CSR teams in the field, in plumbing, in, you know, I don't know what other fields you guys use, but certainly in the plumbing, your CSR team can plumbing talk to the people calling it. Yes? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And we've flirted with the idea of actually getting them certified in plumbing, actually getting an apprentice license and things like that. And flirted with the idea in that it's not really practical, but that is the standard that we want to maintain is really we want to make our team basically as damn good as a technician so that they can have the conversation and a very thorough and, and wonderful conversation on the phone. Not that they will ever use it because homeowners typically, you're not getting in those conversations. We don't necessarily estimate over the phone. We're not diagnosing over the phone. We're not doing Doing those things. However, having that back knowledge, you really reassure the customer that you are more than capable of handling the task at hand. And so we really want that confidence to come across and we want our reps to just feel like, yeah, all day, every day. We do this all the time, right? And you can set the technician up for success. Right. If you hear these key words over the phone call and you're better trained at taking those little points and saying, oh, it could be this, it could be that, you can ask different questions. You'll know what to ask, what information to get to provide for the technician, right? So it's, we almost want it to be like a technician is talking to the homeowner to book that service appointment. Obviously, they don't have the time to do that. They're at another job, but the more, like I said, we can bridge that gap, it's just going to make it much easier for the technician once they get out there. And it's going to create a much better customer service experience for the person calling in, right? They're going to feel well taken care of, reassured that, okay, I called the right company. Yeah, you want to be able to, you know, if I'm calling a plumber or electrician or something in their office, uh, A, I want them to answer the phone, right? I want a human being to answer the phone. Yeah. As Rolando said earlier, we're in a new world. So if you don't answer the phone, I'm hanging up, I'm calling another guy or girl. Yeah, you're probably on Yelp going down or Google, right? Going down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoever doesn't answer, you're going to call the next company. Exactly. And then after I get that human being, I want somebody who can exhibit some knowledge. I do realize it is a customer service office person answering the phone. I don't expect them to be a plumber or an electrician, but I do expect them to know a little bit. And then you guys in your training can certainly uh, help. Like you said, Steve, you could help the sales tech serve them up better to the client. You can identify maybe, you know, I've got a leak in my floor or whatever, and your person can help them turn off the water before the tech gets there or something. I'm sure you got all kinds of checklists and stuff. So that's awesome. How many of these service companies would you say are independently owned and the owner, it's his or her cell phone, and half the time it goes to voicemail? Man, I would say about 70%. Wow. We get ourselves into a situation where they literally have one phone and it's like, hey, well, we need to get a hold of you direct. They forward the number over to us and then we need to get a hold of them for whatever reason. We can text back and forth, but if we need to call, we say, hey, what's the other number we can call back? Like, no, this is it, man. This is like me, business, personal, day, night, all the time, right? Which is great. It's awesome. It's worked out really well, but they're really not set up like a proper business in that there's defined kind of parameters between personal and business. And so, yeah, I mean, I would say about 70%. Starts uh, slow and steady, and before you know it, 10, 15 years have gone by, and it's just all on your phone. It has it worked for him during that time, but he's missed out on, oh my God, how much business? Because again, we're going down the list, right? So 99% of the people are not going to wait for Plumber Bill to call back. They're going to go to the next number on the list. So how much business is lost yeah. by not picking up the phone and letting it go to voicemail? Or that you have a problem, like let's say you just did a job, but there was a mistake or an error or something happened afterwards. And now the client is calling back and I've got a problem. And instead I get a voicemail. So maybe I get a bad review now as the contractor because I'm not answering my phone. We've seen those reviews, right? I called three times and I couldn't get through. Yeah. From my perspective, everything, you said it earlier, Mark, everything's digital, right? So reviews in today's world is essentially word of mouth. I actually think we may have discussed that in one of our previous phone calls. Reviews are word of mouth. 
So if you don't have good reviews, they're not going to find Plumber Jim on page two, right? If it's a difference of a few blocks away and there's a company with 50 reviews and there's a company with 10, they're going to call the company with 50 reviews first. I mean, that's where it really comes from. And frankly, if you're not answering the phone, you're not probably not going to have 50 reviews anyways, right? And, and if you do, they're probably not very good of no fault to the service business, right? I mean, a lot of these guys are hustling. They're out there trying to do the work and it, it's tough. It's not easy. But yeah, you know, every opportunity is a lead. And if you don't capture that lead on the first go around, that person's going to go somewhere else, whether they're going to try to book online. That's a big thing in today's world. And consumers want that. When I order food, I order online. I order Uber Eats or order it online and go pick it up. I don't call the restaurant anymore. And 10 years ago, that's all you did. You'd call the restaurant. Exactly. In fact, I heard Rolando say earlier that you guys were taking in the phone call, the text, the web forms, maybe live chat. You're not just phone answering off virtual office. You are all encompassing all communication channels. And then you're replying in those channels like live chat. Yep, exactly. Right. And, and that's just a customer interaction. Right. And that will continue to adapt. And we want to provide our customers, our clients, these home service professionals, the ability to adapt. And since that is what we do, we can do that at the highest level for them. But if they were to do it on their own, maybe they wouldn't get to that level and really be able to deliver that profound customer experience so that they can get that five-star review and continue to grow their digital word of mouth marketing and things like that. Yeah. Well, they might be able to answer the phone intelligently on their own, but they're never going to be able to do all the other things that you do. You know, machine learning, identifying gaps and services. And doing it with speed, with speed and with accuracy, right? Because that matters today. Yeah. Speed. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, Steve, because speed is immensely important. So many of these guys out there are buying leads, right, from these lead farms, Home Advisor, Angie's List, whatever. And speed is the number one rule in that game. I'm not a fan of all that. It does work for some of these guys, but it's usually a race to the bottom price. So that's why I'm not a fan. But it's also speed, speed to lead, right? So you got to be fast. Not only do you not have you better answer the phone, but when you get that lead, you better respond immediately on those kind of leads. That's amazing right there. So it sounds like you're integrating with their CRM if they have one or maybe providing one to them if they don't to help them. Uh, so you're integrating technology with their systems, yes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so what it comes down to is really two parts. So one is meeting our customer where they're at, meaning we don't want to overhaul their whole business operations because that's just really disruptive. So that's the first part. And the second part is what we were just talking about, which is now meeting the consumer, the homeowner, where they are, right? And so we touched on a couple of things. One is communicating to them through phone call and missing phone calls and things like that. But I think what's really, really important for me always is to get down to like the root cause, like why do we not answer our phones? And obviously we know service professionals are busy, but when they have an office manager, we still miss opportunity. And what it comes down to is there's a lot of people competing for business owners' attention. There's legit actual customers, there's salespeople and spammers and those types of people. And then there's obviously the existing reoccurring customers or follow-ups and things like that. And then in the case that they're running their own personal phone on top of their business, well, they got their kids. They got to go pick them up from school or their mom who uh, you know just went to the hospital or whatever it is, right? So there's a lot of competing and the wife and the friend who wants to hang out this Friday or whatever, right? So there's a lot of people competing for their time. And so what we're able to do is really just channel and pipe all of those people into the appropriate channels and capitalize on the opportunity that comes through each channel, right? So spammers, we eliminate that 100%. We have a way of of identifying those and not even interrupting our client, but also not interrupting our team so that they can focus on the real true opportunity. Now, if it's a supply house, no big deal. Let's get the information. Let's get that message and take care of it. If it's a business opportunity, let's convert that. If it's a follow-up, let's make sure we follow up and deliver great service. If it's a personal call, no problem. Get that information, right? And so that's really why there's so many missed calls. It's not that we just don't care. Or we don't know that it's important that we give good service so that we get reviews and so on. It's hard. 
it's really freaking hard. Good point. <laughs> right? So that is the crux of the issue. And that's really the problem that we solve. And so we solve it by making sure that everybody lands in the right place and that the calls that we don't need to worry about just get eliminated altogether. And so that's the inbound, right? And then we talked about the online portals, right? So we talked about filling out a form online, now talking to people through keyboards, right? So there's the phone and there's keyboards. And so once again, we got to meet the customer where they're at and where they're coming from. So they chose text. Let's text, right? And beyond that, let's make sure that we text immediately. Let's make sure that we call that lead back immediately. Because as we know, we've all seen the graph of basically the success ratios and every minute costs you a significant dip in conversion. So from one minute, you'll get nine out of 10 opportunities. Two minutes, you're going to get eight out of 10, three minutes, so on and so forth. But by five minutes, you're basically getting maybe 10, 15%. And that's it. And it's just gone after that. And so we've built our systems to, back to your point, do you integrate or whatever? We'll meet the customer where they're at. And then we will continue to build on incremental changes so that they can in time see the massive results in terms of revenue, profitability, efficiency, all of that. Yeah. And right now we don't necessarily coach any of our clients on, hey, go with the CRM, go with that CRM. That's not what we do. Although we could. I mean, I think Rolando and I have a unique experience in the home services industry being a part of House Call Pro for such a long time and seeing the struggles, seeing the tools that are out there to help them, them being the home service contractors and professionals, right? So we just have a unique eye and a unique lens that we're looking at this market through. And we have customers that are on House Call Pro, Jobber, Service Titan, others, Google Calendar. We're more than happy to help guide them in the right direction. But you know, that's not necessarily a service that we put on the website. And as far as integrating with different tools and things like that, we're going to obviously continue to march down that path. More tools are going to get created and built and become norms in the industry. And so we need to stay on top of those trends. But then you have the mainstays, right? And the more that we can integrate and have automated data transfers and things like that, A, it's going to be easier for our team. Right. So that means our team can have more time to get other things done. And it's better for our customer, right? Because all the data is in there succinctly, clearly at the flick of a switch, at the snap of a finger, and they can access that wherever they are because that's just how their tools work now. Exactly. What do you guys do when they have no CRM, no systems? You got the single sole proprietor running his plumbing business for 15 years or whatever, and he's got no tools. Like Orlando said, he's got the cell phone in his pocket. He answers half the time. Sure, you make an impact on that guy, but now if he doesn't have tools, there's some probably a little bit of limitations on what you can do for that guy. Yeah, there is. And I think that has really opened our eyes into some of the operations that are getting run. And you can successfully run a business to a certain level doing that. There's for sure you can do that to a certain level. But and I think we kind of spoke and touched on this earlier, but where do these customers want to be? Where is their vision of the future and what do they want to do for themselves and for their own business. And we have quite a few clients that are on Google Calendar and don't have a CRM. And that's where we book their jobs, right, is onto their Google Calendar. And we'll text them the information and then... Yeah, you meet them where they are, like Orlando said, that's where they are. Otherwise, as I go in, I tend to disrupt their life and their business a lot because I'm saying, hey, you're in the yellow pages, man. But we're in a smartphone world. You're living in a Yellow Pages world. The rest of the world is in a smartphone world. If you want your business to be different and more successful and more efficient, work less hours, have better control, grow from within, spend less on acquiring customers, then you need to harness and accept the tools of the trade today. You would go out and get a new tool for your business. I wish I knew can name off the top of my head some plumbing tools or whatever. But if a new tool came out to make replacing a toilet easier and it legitimately cut a half an hour of labor out of the job, you would go get that tool, right? Like a camera inspection or something for a drain. So same thing here. They're just not exactly related to your industry. It's not an industry tool, but it is a business tool. These are business tools and these guys, men and women, need to harness the technology. So you guys are impressive. I got to say, I've learned a lot more about what you do. So if I'm a home service company, give me like a few tips that I could just institute myself 
do you think, to help me run a little bit better customer service team? Maybe I have one or two girls in the office. Let's give them a tip or two that you think might help them increase business a little bit. Yeah, so we have a handful of criteria. So we talk about every call being the perfect call. So really just having the perfect call every time. There's a handful of criteria that goes along with that, being empathetic with the customer, restating the problem, capturing all of the relevant questions to the problem itself, so on and so forth. So there's just like a handful of things, but I think it really comes down to what is important to you. The United States is big, it's big, and there's just so many different pockets and all of our customers work in different industries and then also in different geographical areas. And so it really just comes down to like what's important to your customers and to you as a business owner. And then once you identify what that is, then deliver on that, right? Measure that and make sure that you and your teams are delivering that. And so it's not a catch-all, which is like, oh, what's the number one tip? It's like really just who do you want to be remembered as, right? Like the world is noisy. Everybody's competing for everybody's time and attention. And and even more so with the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the TikToks of the day where it's just like, bing, bing, myself included. I got the Apple Watch. It's just like, (laughs) constantly bombarding me. As a matter of fact, I was relaxing last night with my in-laws that are in town and I get a picture of my friend like on my phone. It's just like a picture of him. And I'm like, gosh, why are you on my wrist right now? (laughs) Lots of interruption. Yeah, that's right. And so it's just an interruption, right? And so there's just so many of that. And so the point is the world is noisy. What do you want to be remembered for? And define that and then deliver that every single time. Because the easy answers are like, oh, empathy and relate to the customer and really understand their issue and reiterate that and set the proper expectations, those things. But it's like, well, they sound every day to you, Rolando, and maybe to other people out there. But that really is the most important thing for a CSR team, right? People answering your phone, you can squeeze all that into listen, just listen, listen well. And there's two ways There's listening and there's hearing, right? Listening, you're intently taking in what the other person is saying, not only what they're saying, but how are they saying it? What's the tone in their voice? What's in the background that maybe they're not communicating? Do they sound like they're in a stressful environment and then their voice is a little bit frantic when they talk? That can adjust how you respond and where you take that conversation. Yeah. But if you already know what you want to say the whole time, then you're not even listening. You're just hearing until they stop talking. And then, oh, I can say what I wanted to say now. Exactly. You really have to change to listening. Changing to listening is an acquired skill set, too, for most of us, right? Most of us, our ego wants to shout out, hey, look at me. I know something about that, too, or whatever. And instead, yeah, especially when it comes to your customer calling in, you just want to listen. What's Rolando put it perfectly? What's your problem? How can I help? And Steve, like you said, what's the emotion behind it? How frantic is it? How uh, emergent is it? Well, that's good stuff, guys. Is there a common myth in your industry that you'd like to debunk? I think something that comes up often is that a lot of these business owners don't know how to run a business. I think that's like a common thread. It comes in different flavors, but it's like, oh, these guys are not great business people, things like that. And I actually think that's wrong. I don't think they're not great business people. I think they just don't know how to operationalize their business. And so we're coming into a more complicated and complex time where customer needs have changed, logistics have changed, gas prices are going through the roof. So you got to be smart about how many times you're crossing the damn city and what times you're crossing the city, things like that. And so there's just a lot of new information and data that's available to make better decisions. And so what I think has happened is it's not that they don't know how to run a business or they're not great business people. And it's kind of like, there's a lot that kind of goes into this whole They're not good business people. They don't know how to run a business. It's like, that's not true. They're not proficient in the tools that are available given the advancement of technology over the last 20 years. And that's what's happened. Do they understand how to serve customers and get the job done and treat them well and build a good relationship and build rapport and wow them and deliver exceptional value? Fuck yeah, like absolutely. And that's business, right? Like business is delivering consistently at a high level and they do that well. Well, that's a good point, Rolando. But they just don't have that nuance of all of the freaking gadgets and gizmos and technology and analytics and data that's available today. And that's where we come in. You're right. Yeah, none of that stuff. I'm guilty of... That's one part of business. Like, that's a part of business. It's not this whole catch-all. Like, that is just one part. Yeah, yeah, it's a part of it. No, you're right. I'm guilty of being in that former crowd, actually, of saying, 
too often that a lot of home service companies are not great business owners. But that's not true. You're actually right. They deliver great service consistently, most of them. But in the last 20 years, things like CRMs and all these tools, and like you said, the customer has changed. So 20 years ago, you just had to answer your phone. Today, you got text, you got chat, you got email, you got a lot. And these are where the customers are going, whether you want to or not. And they're coming in fast, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a lot more competition. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. The internet also opened to everybody is your competitor now, right? The guy who is three towns over, who 25 years ago was not a competitor, now he is. Because 25 years ago, he was only advertising in his town local newspaper. Right. But now I can go online. Rolando and I were in San Diego. I can go online and I can see plumbers all across the city. Exactly. 25 years ago, I would only see the one that was in my local neighborhood. That's right. Or sometimes you had to actually get in your car and go take a drive and see what kind of stores were in town you could go shop at or whatever. I don't need to go anywhere. I can do everything I need to from my desk. I can order my groceries. I can order a pizza. I can order a movie. I can have a conversation like this with my mom. I can do business from my desk. I can call a plumber from my desk. I can book a plumber online from my desk. Without a doubt. The world has changed. There's a lot of new tools. They're technological. Some of them are a little challenging. So yeah, it's a little, maybe an overwhelming time to be a business owner and to put all these pieces together. It is most definitely an overwhelming time. With that said, what advice would you give to somebody who was just starting a home service business? Yeah, I think my advice would be to take complete ownership of the world around you and, and what we're operating in. You just can't fight the current. And if you do, you're just going to put yourself at risk. And what Rolando said earlier is, who do you want to be? Do you want to be successful? Do you want to provide a good life for you, provide a good life for your family, be a great friend, be a great husband, be a great wife, be a great father? And if you do, well, then take ownership of the tools that are around you and don't make excuses like, oh, I wish the world wasn't this way or that way. Technology is just going to continue to develop and the wildest things in our imagination right now will be reality before we know it, right? So that would be my point of advice is just understand that, own it. Maybe you don't agree with it. Not saying you have to agree with it, but don't fight it and use it to your advantage. I agree. Adapt to the world as it is. How about yourself, Rolando? Any tidbit for a new business starting? I think Steve just about covered it there. But I would say just get after it. Don't ask for permission. Just get out there and start doing it. And you'll learn every single day how to just get better and be willing to put in that work. I'm all about just empowering people to just go and do it. Like, don't ask for permission. The world is not built by anybody any smarter than you. And you could just go out and just start getting after it. And so do that and just be open to learning every single day and apply those learnings to the next day. And with time and consistency, you could really build something great. That's really good advice. Too many of us try to perfect things before we come out of the gate and instead just jump out of the gate. That's right. Yeah, that's the hardest step to take is the first one. It really is. And then you have momentum and you have a little bit of confidence. And there's a book that I read called The Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Iger, who is the former CEO of Disney. Really thrilling book, super fun. I actually, I do an audio book. I listen to them when I walk my dog. So I can just kind of like zone out and look at the pavement and really visualize the words. There's a great line that he said, which long shots are usually not as long as they seem, right? So it can seem so daunting to start a business at first. But once you take that first step, and you kind of get moving. You're like, okay, okay, this is pretty good. And by the time you know it, you're running full speed and you know, you're having a great time. This was another one. Even the boldest ideas can be executed. 70 years ago, people were conceptualizing landing on the moon. Who the hell is going to do that? Now we're flying a helicopter on Mars, for God's sake. That's crazy. Yeah, there's a great quote from, uh, I forget his name, the founder of LinkedIn, said something like, starting a business is like jumping off a cliff and building an airplane on the way down. That's the way you should do it. Jump. And then the rest will figure it out. You're not going to get all the parts together beforehand ever. Never, ever, ever. Entrepreneurship is awesome, takes a special kind of character. You're going to want to 
but it's extremely rewarding. And uh, you can not only employ people and affect their lives, but of course you're serving clients and affecting their lives. What would you guys say is the most rewarding thing owning a business for yourselves? Time. The older I get, the more I realize how important time is. It just goes by so fast. And I'm sure you two gentlemen can corroborate that point where being able to... And I'm not saying I have all the the most free time in the world because running a business is challenging and I need to put a lot of effort towards that. But I feel so fulfilled when I am making the decision for myself to work on things that I want to work on. And does that mean I'm working six hours a day? Hell no, I'm working my butt off, right? But it's much different than being told, hey, Steve, I need this thing by tomorrow. And then for me, I'm saying, well, why do we need it? Why do we need it by tomorrow? What value is it going to deliver as if we get it tomorrow as opposed to a week from now? And the person that's told me I needed to do it for tomorrow, they're not going to tell me all that because they're super busy and they just are going to tell me what to go do, right? So that's the biggest thing for me is I just feel really fulfilled about how I spend my time. And independence sounds like and being able to direct where you want to go in your future. How about yourself, Orlando? Yeah, I mean, I think it just comes down to doing something that I believe in just having that freedom of choice. We could choose to do a whole lot of things in this life and we don't have much time to really make a difference and make an impact. And so really having the choice to one, choose that path and then two, going and making an impact in that path. That's really where I've seen the greatest satisfaction and joy come from my life has really been impacting other people's lives. So the business owner, they have a dream and we're helping them realize that dream. Our employees have a dream and we're helping them realize that dream. I have a dream, my family has a dream, and we're enabling that dream every single day for the people that we affect. And so that, to me, is the greatest inspiration. Every day I get to work on my dream that relates to my employee's dream, that relates to my customer's dream, that it relates to their customer's dream. It's that level of impact that is just really profound because we could go do anything, right? We're really, really fortunate to be able to have that freedom of choice. So choose well. Yeah, I agree. I got uh, I got goosebumps on my arm here. Gentlemen, we ran a little long. Sorry. Thank you very much. I appreciate your coming on the show and sharing your information. That was awesome. I didn't know that technology had penetrated the virtual office space as much as it has. Really impressive. I like what you do. And a million thanks for coming on the show, gents. Thank you for having us, Mark. Great conversation. Mark, you are a true professional. I really appreciate you giving us this platform. And I appreciate you uh, doing uh, the great work with Bob, R.T. Olson, but also just in general, getting this information out. This is probably one of the more productive things that we can all do with our time is to get these insights and conversations out into the world and impact and inspire as many people as we can to just continue to make a difference. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you for coming on. This is a big one. Answering the phone, all that. That's like the very core, the root of running a business. So uh, I'm really happy you guys came on and enlightened uh, myself and the audience here. So again, a million thanks. I look forward to a, a long relationship with you gents. Thanks for listening to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast. To power up your home service business, for show notes, visit Battle Plan Marketing slash podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please share it on social. Until next time.